say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in farmer's kitchen. In town, farmer's country kitchen. cook something good now. Hello and welcome to our country kitchen. Guess what? We're on a patio today. That's right. We're it's gonna nice. Have, it, it is nice. Really nice out. We're going to have a very, this might be, not kidding you, one of my favorite recipes today. Really? Really. It's okay. unusual. Um, I, I'll give you a hint. It involves zucchini. Now, I don't like <laughs> to substitute this for that because I'm so used, I'm a traditionalist, right. but this is one of those times Kind of like when mom made the mock apple pie. Mm -hmm. right. And if you want to check that out, here's a picture of mom. Here's a little bit of video of mom making her mock apple pie. That was good. It defied explanation. Mm -hmm. The way she seasoned it, you could not tell there's any different right. than an apple pie. And zucchini's coming out your ears right now, and it's unbelievable what you can do with it. You know, we got our uh, Mac pack, I call right. it, our CSA. Yeah. Every square inch of, well, not every square inch, but our garden spot got taken over by Maybell. And, and her baby and boys. Mo and Mojo. Our vegetables come from a CSA. I now, like that a, better. It is a very interesting concept. I love the food movement that is happening. I found out about this from my favorite store, and we go to our favorite store and we right. find vegetables that are fresh from Kentucky people. Oh, the things you can do. So if you don't have your own zucchini, it is coming out everybody's ears oh, right now. It is, now. and this is all from Mac stuff. Readily available. Right. But first of all, let's talk about the farm. What's going on? You're going to hear a lot of. <laughs> Somebody's being weaned. That's right, and they don't like it. They They're their across mama. the fence from Mama. Mamas have got a long overdue break. They're enjoying it. They're just looking at it. Oh, yeah. They're, They're looking at us like, ground. why didn't you do this Thank you. a while back? <laughs> now, the lambs don't love it so much, but we talked to Kelly Yates about the fact that it's not going to be too long before we're going to take our first lamb, and we're starting to fatten them up. Right. When they start, that right there? Mm hmm a little bit of alfalfa and corn seems to Shut make them, them, them yeah. forget their uh -huh. memories for a while. Another thing that's happened here recently, we're talking about the possibility of training Murphy, your Christmas present. That's right. He is the sweetest dog. He really now, is. Now, I'm not sure if he's got the fire. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do it, but I know somebody who does this for a living. Really? Now, she's in Indiana. We've been looking for an excuse to go to Indiana because of all our wonderful viewers and friends That's in right. Indiana. Thank you so much for watching up there. But we went to see Denise after talking to her, Kelly knew her, right. about training puppies for use or bringing sheep back. You want your dog to be able to go on command, round them up, bring them back. That's the only thing I need. We could have used them the other night when they all got out. <laughs> we could have cut him free to get everybody. Let me tell you what, I was supposed to go on a striper trip and here's what Roddy and them caught. We're gonna be cooking those up shortly on next week's show with another wonderful recipe That's from right. our friend Lisa. But in the meantime, I missed my trip because we came home from a birthday party and the sheep were standing in the yard, the dogs right. were gone. The fence went out, so all the power was off. Maggie and Millie were gone. Yeah. That's what happens when you have a storm sometimes. Right. But everybody's back, thank goodness. But we could've used Murph to we round them up used Murph instead to of us. Everybody. That's what have been nice. <laughs> so let's go right now to talk to Denise while we start preparing this wonderful recipe, which you're gonna actually love. And she has a passion for this. She writes for Sheepdog magazines. She's a dog whisperer. She's one really? of those people that understands the animal. She understands all this body language. Uh, with no further ado, here we go. Indiana, here we come. Here's Denise. We're in Indiana today with Denise. Hey. <laughs> you know what? We've been looking for an excuse to come to Indiana because we have so many wonderful viewers right who watch from right Indiana. Down. And in the background, we have things going on like lie down, <laughs> which 
today is one of your commands that you're going to give to your dogs while they're working sheep. Now, you have a working farm. Yes. Well, several acres, several dogs, several sheep, and you don't have these dogs by accident. You've got a lot of sheep, so, you know, the whole thing is with these working dogs, they need a job. They're, they're definitely bred to do this, and they, it's, it's in their line, it's in their history for hundreds of years. Um, border Collies come from the border between Scotland and England. That's why they're called Border Collies. They're smart. They are intelligent, yeah. And, and it goes way beyond come by in a way in the normal commands because when I send my dogs, normally when we're out of the training pasture and I'm doing real work, I trust them to bring all the sheep all the time. And there are definitely times where that can't happen. You know, I've had lambs' heads stuck in fences, something's wrong in the pasture. So the dogs let me know something is wrong and they need me. You know, I've had dogs come to the top of the hill and say, uh, oh, down here, honey. <laughs> so they're that concerned about your, they, yeah. they want you to, to I, like I, them and love them and, and they want to please you. I, it, it's definitely, the relationship has a lot to do with it, but I don't know how they figure out that they need extra help mm -hmm. or, you know, situations where they can't handle it. But they certainly let but you know. But they, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Now, you've got a lot of acreage, and I can imagine there's going to be times when there's a little dip or the grass is high or there's some trees where you can't see everything. Most of the time. Most of the time. Right. So, and I suppose that you move these sheep from pasture to pasture. We you do rotate. rotational grazing. I use the dogs pretty much every day, even if I'm going to check sheep, because when I come to the gate, the sheep go, woohoo, we get to go somewhere else. And it's like, no, you're not ready to go somewhere else. So the dog will come in, push the sheep away from the gate. I'll drive in with the four wheeler, check fences. You know, he'll hold the sheep back from the gate when we leave. Um, he'll bring up sheep, you know, if it's a big pasture. So I, everybody walks past me so I can check on everybody. There's not usually a day that goes by that I don't use at least one. How many do you have? Dogs or sheep? Dogs. <laughs> um, I have I have six adult dogs. One's retired, and one's just a young girl. So we're we're not out of the training pasture with her yet. Um, I have three main work dogs. A lot of the things that I I put words to are what they naturally do. Right. Border collies of the herding breeds herd by going to the head of the livestock and bringing the livestock to you. That's that's what they live for. Mm -hmm. They also can take livestock from you and drive. Mm -hmm. But most dogs, that is a more trained skill. It's less natural. Scott and most of his descendants um, take to driving quite naturally. Mm -hmm. But not all dogs are like that. Where obedience, you know, is teaching, you, you make the dog sit and then you teach it to sit by using the word while you're doing it. Basically, I let him go around sheep and then I add the word as he's doing it. Ah. So it's not not all that different. Lie down, please. <laughs> this is Scott. He is six. He's pretty much fully trained. He excels on larger groups of sheep. So we're just gonna work in my training pasture and show you a little bit with these. So when I send him, come by. Easy does it. Time. Time. So time is a slow down command to take his time. Wait. Lie down. Way is, is a flank command. Lie down. And Scott doesn't like to lie, so he stands, which is fine. Come by is clockwise. Way to me, way is counterclockwise. We, since there's three moving parts, you know, the sheep, you, and the dog, that all factors into the equation. You know, where you are and what pressure you're applying to the sheep and the dog affects all the movement. It, it is challenging. So you're a real live, no doubt about it, sheep farmer, and these are your helpers. Absolutely, partners. Partners. Yes. It's hard to find good help nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to me like you've got some eager participants. You don't see everybody showing up for work with that expression on their face. No, and, and their weather, whether it's raining, snowing. They don't care. They don't care, time of day. They want to go to work. They're with me pretty much 24-7, and, and they'd be 
mad if I went to the pasture without them. <laughs> Best case, worst case scenario, what's the quickest that you've ever had a dog finish and what's, you know? Um, I've started a lot more dogs than I finished. They only get finished if they stay. Right. And obviously I don't have work for tons of dogs. Um, but I started a pup of his two years ago. Oh, actually, she started herself. She crawled through the fence and was herding sheep. She's about three months old. She was herding a flock of sheep, using lambs, in the rain. And I called all the other puppies in and she didn't come. And she was out here working sheep. And she had them in a bunch. And she was keeping him in that bunch. And then she'd drive him across the field a little bit. And then she'd get him in a bunch again. Without any guidance whatsoever? I was in the house. So it is all, all the information is in their heads from the day they're born. Honestly, the more I, I work with dogs and train them, the more I think it's instinct. Right. Um, the less I feel I have something to do with it. I feel my job is exposing them to sheep, letting them do the things that come naturally to them, and helping them on the pieces that are less natural and easy. Okay, tell us about this girl. Okay, so this girl is two and a half. She's Scott's daughter, raised her from a pup. She started working about four and a half months old. She enjoys working, but she's a whole lot more laid back than Scott. She's easier going, she listens really well. You can about stop her at any spot. She wants to work, but she just has a whole different style of working. She can get a lot closer to the sheep. She doesn't scare them like he does. Um, she really enjoys shedding, which is sorting some, some sheep off from the others. Like if you need to, if you need to medicate them or trim hooves or whatever, and you don't want to take a hundred to the barn, you know, you can sort off, you know, these 10 and take them. Because I enjoy the training aspect um, and the real work application, my passion is helping farmers and ranchers learn to use these dogs. And you actually do clinics? Yeah. I usually have a clinician come in. That's way better than I am. Jack Knox comes, and he is originally from Scotland. There's a ton of different training philosophies. So, and, and if they work for you and your dog, that's great. I think the best approach is bringing out the instinct in the dog, letting him know where he's right and where he's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I want my dog thinking all the time. I want him to be able to be other side of the pond, in waist high grass, behind the trees, taking care of it. I'm not gonna get there. I'm not gonna get there fast enough. I'm not gonna get there. I'm not gonna see what's going on. So I need him, I need him to take care of it. And if he respects me and the sheep, we're good. I can imagine in the early days when pasta was first invented. Right. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> what can we put on this to make it really good? And then you think, uh, you think of the garlic and the basil and the tomato and the, and the ingredients. Everything in your garden. Everything in your garden. Yeah. And pizzas, same mm -hmm. sort of thing. You know, they used to have these huge, monstrous Greek and Roman ovens that they would use for uh, pizzas. Really? They had pizza parlors. Really? 2,000 years ago. Yeah. They actually had these. And then once they cooked their meal during the day, as the temperatures came down, people would go to this community oven and pop their bread in it and really? cook their own bread. Is that not That's, cool? Yeah, I'd like that. So today, we're not in Greece. I wish we were, but... Your family's home. I've got to go there someday. But we're going to make a really cool recipe. And you know what? You need, you need yourself one of these. It's a little Julian shredder, I guess you'd call it. And you just run it down. That's the cool part about this yeah. whole thing. That's that's our spaghetti. But it's fun. first of all, we got to get started with our base. And our base begins with some olive oil. We need about three tablespoons of that. Okay. Let me tell you a little secret about CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. All right, what we do is we pick up our bag once a week and we don't know what's going to be in it. For example, this time we had zucchini and tomatoes and beets and some other right. things like that. He has a recipe with it. Good recipes, always. Yeah, something that you kind of step outside your comfort zone. And this is a variation of that recipe, mostly following that, but we're going to add a few more things. Now, we talk about growing your own. I don't care where you live. If you have a windowsill, you can grow basil and oregano, which is part of our recipe tonight. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start a burner here. Don't you love cooking outside? I do. As opposed to dirty in the kitchen. And Nikki's cutting up what, about two to three? Garlic cloves. Garlic cloves. And, and I did half of a shallot. All right. With the beautiful chorus of dogs and lambs in the background. They have their own little choir. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful music. Uh -huh. We're going to go Ready? ahead and add that. And again, you don't want to get this too done. And how many pepper flakes do you want? How much? You know what? That's up to you. Um, what do you think? You tell me when. So now, this is the fun part to me. I do like doing this. They say keep the green? Yeah, the green because you want that look in your in it. All right, now when you start seeing the seeds, obviously you're just about there. Now look what you've got. Look at that. If you're trying to do the low carb thing, which some people do, some people don't, and we don't ever stick to any particular diet. But look at that. Is that not beautiful? It is beautiful. All right, now again, this is a, it's, it looks like a peeler, but it's called a Julian Shredder or, and you can get these at Bed Bath & Beyond. Some Kroger's have them. Any kitchen store, any fine appliance, kitchen appliance store will have these. This might be better than spaghetti because you actually kind of brown it and get all that flavor. We're being healthy. That's crazy. Yeah, this is olive oil. In my estimation of some of the recipes we've done, this is one of my favorites. The flavor is amazing. It this. is amazing and it's so fresh. Yeah. When you think about having spaghetti, you know, a lot of times you go someplace and get this old stale sauce out of a can. Yeah. You're actually getting the essence of what pasta is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting your tomatoes. Is that all right? Yep. All right, Nikki, while you're doing that, I'm just, just going to get a little bit of oregano. Okay. And I'm going to leave because. these bigger, these pieces. It said leave them bigger so it can just mix it in. You're going to throw them in there for you? You can chop those up a little bit if you all want. Right. Oh, if you could smell this, what's already going on over here. All right, a whole lot of folks have been asking if Nikki and I are going to the fair. I used to go to the fair a lot when I was with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. So we are going to go to the fair, and we will be there August 25th from 6 to 7 at the KET booth in the South Wing. That will be fun. Meet that people. will be a lot meet of fun. People. So are you folks, if you can, we'd love to meet you. Come on out, and uh, we'll be hanging out there for a little while. And, uh, and eating some bad fair food, because we love to. Well, we will eat some bad fair food, because you, you make I can't me. help myself. I have no choice in the matter. <laughs> All right, Nikki. You ready? I think we're there. It's seven minutes. All right. Here we come with our fresh, tomatoes. beautiful tomatoes. And this was a tomato and a half, but it says two medium tomatoes, so it's kind of what you like. The basil and the oregano went in. It was just yep. a tiny little bit of oregano. Oh, the smell. Get a little bit of that juice. Look at that, how that's looking spaghetti-like And you need already. cheese. You ready? Cheese already? Yeah, half a cup of cheese. We're going to cook it in it, and then we'll save some oh, for wow. the top, too. All right. <laughs> what do you think? It smells delish. Doesn't that look good, too? Look at that. I Yum. wish you could smell it. Oh, my. Isn't that good? Now, this is enough for Nikki and I. All right, now, the last little thing we're going to do, Nikki. We got a teaspoon of cornstarch and two teaspoons of water. Just add a little bit to okay. that. Make a little bit of a sauce. It's going to thicken up the just to put it over the top. The unhealthy part here. All right. Then you can just scoop that over the top. All right. During this whole process, if you want to salt and pepper a little bit, or at the end, you can just top it off with a little salt and pepper if you choose to do that. You don't have to. A little cheese? What do you think? I think a lot of cheese. Look at that. Yum. And it's healthy. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Try. You go ahead and try first. You got spaghetti. You got spaghetti right there. <laughs> Look at that. It's all fresh veggies. Just like you would eat regular spaghetti. Look at the sauce that's pulled up on the sides. Are you kidding me? Amazing. What do you think? Isn't it delicious? And it's all veggies. Yum. Isn't that ridiculous? And the cheese really makes it too. In my estimation, wow. whether you're trying to eat healthy or not, this is healthy. This is fabulous. It's great. It's like great Italian. But the, the carb situation wow. here is going to be so much lower because your spaghetti is zucchini. And it's really good. So I'm going to call mm. this zucchini spaghetti. Look at that. All right, now in a second, we're going to clean up here, but she's got a little tool. You remember the little pool chopper she got for onions? She's got a little tool that we're going to work on a piece of pineapple. I love tools. Since we were so good and we're watching our carbs, we're going to be a little bit bad. But we're having fruit. There's fruit still. Yeah, we're being good. We're going to have a wonderful dessert that's so easily done right over here. Let's tear into this a little bit more, though. Got a fresh pineapple. Mm -hmm. Got a pineapple core. -er. It's kind of neat, Best isn't it? Word. Yeah. 
and it just spirals it. You just dig in, then you pull out. Now there's more in there. We'll get that later. And you got a pineapple just to fill up. Got a pineapple. Make there's a juice in there we can drink. Oh yeah. Now we're going to do something simple tonight, but delicious. And we're going to start by melting about, I'd say that's four tablespoons Looks of butter. Looks like it, yeah. I'm going to put a little brown sugar in. Actually, I'm going to put a lot. You sure you should do that? What, what do you mean? I mean, you might want to suck it. <laughs> okay, Wait now you can have it. Wait a minute, look. Okay. There you go, perfect. You're good. You can have as much okay. as you want. Better now? Just relax. Look shoot, how flat my stuff. Shoot the head up, Kelly. <laughs> All right, so here we're going, I don't know, how much brown sugar is that? Probably a third of a cup? Yeah. Something like Plus that. something. Plus a little. I'm just going to add for flavor just a tiny bit of dark rum. Just a tiny bit, Nikki. We don't want to flare right. up here. Just a little bit for taste. About a capful? I'd say that's about right. Oh. Uh -huh. Now look at that. That looks good. All right, I'm going to set that off. Now, rather quickly, I'm going to bring this over here with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and put my pineapple on and get some grill marks on it. I'll try a little bit before it's yeah, all go gone. Ahead. Let me tell you what. This is like a, like a fruity drink. Yeah, it is. Can I try one more? It's like pineapple upside down cake with that is. cake. That is really good. Oh, no calories. Mm. Mm. You know what? That is really, really good. It's like Quick caramel. It's like caramel. Well, that caramelizes when it gets nice and hot and you turn it over. I like the coconut too. Good job. Mm. That's delicious. Let's make some more of those. So tonight was all about fresh fruits and vegetables. That's right, fruits and vegetables. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even we had coconut. Perfect. So a quick reminder, we are going to be at the fair. That's right. August 25th, South Wing at the KET booth mm -hmm. from 6 to 7. And everybody comes in groups and families. For right. the, so the first 10 groups that show up, they get a free new cookbook. Wow, that's a good idea. How about that? That's fun. And we love talking to our or not, I wouldn't call them viewers, I call them friends who watch our show and are on our Facebook page. Speaking of our Facebook page, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, <gasps> why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? It's very simple. All you got to do is click like. And if you haven't got a Facebook page, then go to your grandkids yes, or will. your kids That's right. or Everybody's... your kindergartners. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they showed me how to do it. And it set you up a Facebook page so you can talk with us. That was some good vittles, Mrs. I Farmer. might have to have some more of that. And because we've got a gazillion different recipes, most of them very simple, very quick way to find those. Where would you go? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. That's right. You can find recipes. Mm -hmm. You can find how-tos. We've got some more how-tos coming up. I have been a little bit not in the active range with the broken arm. I'm going to, I'm finding out hopefully that's healing slowly. So right. we're going to get back out and doing some stuff here before long, some how-to type stuff. We've got some good stuff coming up there too. But at this point, before that gets too much colder, it's all about I know. good times, good friends. Let's eat. Good eat. See you next week with a brand new Tim mm. Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.